What's going on everybody? It is Thursday, April 12th, I think. Uh, and we've got the first garbage baseball slate of the day, or of the year. Um, four games on the main slate for DK, five games on the main slate for DraftKings. I'm not entirely sure how much fun this is going to be, but we're going to cover it anyway. Joining me, as always, fellow awesomeo.com writer Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? Yeah, you said it best, Josh. Uh, it's not a not a great slate, but we're gonna we're gonna try to break it down here. Maybe find an edge or two, and uh, there's still money to be made on both sides. So we'll try to get you prepared here. Yeah, it's this is just a it's just a bummer slate, but I'm happy about it. No basketball tonight. I can focus solely on baseball. I know you're gonna have uh, dipping your toe in the water and. Um, Mostly hockey tonight, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> five, five playoff games, so it's a pretty decent sized slate. Yeah, that's that's actually really big for a playoff slate. Yeah. All right, let's just dive in here. Um, first game up, Nats and Rockies. Nats with a five point one run implied total. Uh, Rockies with a three point nine run implied total. Gio Gonzalez going for Washington, 63% chance to win. Uh, Chad Bettis going for the Rockies. Um, Bettis isn't a guy that I'd be looking at on FanDuel. Uh, he's not really a guy that I would probably be looking at on DK either. I think this is just a story of how much do you like Gio Gonzalez? I mean, I, originally, like when I was looking at this, I didn't really like him at all, but um, with the size of the slate and the other pitchers, there, I mean, you you can make a case for him as one of the top two options on DraftKings, especially ten thousand one hundred. I don't like the price, but there is some strikeout upside here. Um, he strikes out righties at a twenty three percent clip, and Nolan Arenado might not be in this lineup, which would be a big boost for Gio Gonzalez. So Arenado was in that brawl yesterday. Yeah, a little, little bit out. of a brouhaha yesterday. Yeah, so. Um, I don't know if he's if they're going to suspend him and then a little peel and be able to play this game or what. But if he's not in that lineup, that is a pretty substantial bump for me for Gio Gonzalez. The run total is pretty good. The yeah. only problem is it's good hitting weather and the wind is blowing out. So um, when Gio's on, it doesn't really matter. The, the wind won't really matter because he'll be creating ground balls and, and getting strikeouts. But um, he does definitely scare me here. But I, I think I might use him on DraftKings just because of the nature of the slate. Yeah, I would expect this will follow normal baseball paths where he gets suspended, he appeals, and then they cut that suspension in half or whatever. Um, but he's certainly going to get at least a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, there was some. Yeah, he, he can't just, just wouldn't stop. You can't just charge the mound and and nothing happened. Like I, I get it. I didn't see the the lead up to it, but um, anyone throws a baseball at your head you're probably gonna be a little bit mad so yeah i couldn't stop watching the catcher in the video because he kept trying to like rip off his mask over and over again but it was already gone it's the only thing that i've <laughs> noticed in the entire clip he just keeps going up to his head like trying to pull something off that isn't there <laughs> oh, i didn't see that it's I the, only, watch it's it the only thing i can notice in the clip <laughs> uh yeah so i, I like geo here um mostly due to scarcity of pitching. I don't really I'm not really fond of much of anything tonight. And uh as far as high level stuff goes, you know, he's got the second highest salary on FanDuel. Um which leads me probably away from Barrios. Uh the only other option that I would really see is Sunny Gray and I think that one's a little bit scarier for me. So Gonzalez is sort of like the least of the evils. It's a you know great implied total. Rockies three point nine. I've always wanted to look at it, and I've never re really read anything to see if the Rockies have any sort of hangover effects in their first game after a series in Colorado. I feel like that could be weird to them, but I have no idea. Do you mean because of the the? Just like the dramatic differences in elevation, like yeah. you know, yesterday they were in. Colorado playing at elevation today they're two time zones over and you know not playing at elevation I've, I've always wondered if they have any sort of first game of a series hangover after being in Colorado 
that that definitely be interesting to look at or like after a long road trip yeah. when they come back in 10 days or whatever if, if there's a some sort of correlation to them not playing as well or not having as high of a, a, of a run total yeah um so uh, i'll have some geo i don't have a ton of interest in rocky's bats but they run so righty heavy that i think that you can get there the pricing is not the best on fanduel it's a little bit better like lemayhu arenado story isn't too shabby on dk like i'd be i'd be happy having that as sort of a core i don't generally like going against higher level pitching but when you can get that righty lefty matchup it doesn't make me as scared of geo i'm i'm right with you like if arenado is playing right. then i really like him he strikes out 10 percent of the time against lefties and it's not like geo has crazy good swing and miss stuff so arenado would be the guy and then um, Story and Desmond for me, as well as Ionetta. So if Geo is going to be chalk, like you know how that goes. Yeah. When uh, when Geo's chalk, the wind's blowing out. So it is a good matchup for some of these righties if they're all going to be in the lineup. Um, if if we see a weaker lineup, I'll probably shift over towards Geo. So I don't know exactly what I want to do for this game or for that matchup specifically, but I I do like both sides of it because there's not a lot to like on this slate. Yeah, I, like I'd be fine having X amount of Geo and then having like 50% Rocky stacks of whatever I had of Geo in yep. lineups where I don't have Geo. Yeah. Um, Nats bats, though. Uh, not I'm not exactly uh, super fearful of Chad Bettis and his 6.4 projected Ks per nine via Steamer. Um so Brian Goodwin, if he's at the top of the order, I, I'd like a part of that. Uh, Harper, again, looking like he's in a really nice spot. I don't mind grabbing like a Trey Turner or Rendon to to complete that stack. Um, I, I don't have any problems grabbing a couple Nats, especially with that 5.1 run implied total. Yeah, but it's just a guy that he just isn't great at missing bats. It's showing in his swing strike rate, 5 and 8% swing strike rate in his first two starts uh he's just not a good picture not one that i'm looking to use and yeah you said harper goodwin trey turner if he's batting second and then um really those top five for the nationals with harper being my favorite goodwin probably being my second favorite on DraftKings because he's only 3500 yeah and he's looking like he's going to lead off so those are the two guys i key in on and i get the nat stack as well yeah, I would have loved to see another lefty bat, like, you know, in that Zimmerman five hole. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, they look like yeah. a good spot. Well, it's too bad they don't have Adam Lind anymore. Yeah. Like, Adam Lind or whatever. I mean, he, uh, I mean, he just owned right-handed hitting. Couldn't yeah. hit a lefty to save his life, though. Exactly. So, like, against these righties that that can't miss any bats, like, Lind would be a perfect guy. He'd be, like, 3K yeah. on DraftKings, and he's awesome to stack. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, um, grab some Nat stacks. They'll be relatively popular with that total and with their matchup. Um, but I think that the Rockies could be sneaky. So long as Arenado is in the lineup. If he's not in the lineup, it, it makes the stack a bit less appealing. Right. And that line will probably move a little bit then too. Yeah. Alrighty. Red Sox and Yankees. Uh, they both have a 4.6 run implied total right now. Obviously, that means 50-50. Uh, Porcello on the hill for Boston and Sonny Gray going for the Yankees. Um, I don't really like either of these guys on FanDuel. And I'd be more likely to play Sonny Gray on DK just because of the, the $400 price difference. Uh, Gray is actually $200 more than Porcello on FanDuel. I think Gray is my favorite pitcher on the slate tonight. Um, and I'm like, when I say that, I'm talking about DraftKings. I primarily sure. play on DraftKings. So just a reminder um, Gray is top 15 in swing, uh, whisper per swing. Uh, his curveball is getting a ton of whiffs. And I think there are some advantages for him in this Red Sox lineup. It is a big total to play a pitcher against. And there's some weather to be concerned about. So there are some red flags for sure. 
Um, but I think the bottom of the lineup for the Red Sox isn't that scary. Mm-hmm. And there are some strikeouts. We've seen Gray have games with eight, ten strikeouts last year. And um, I'm not saying he's going to do that. But for 7,700, I think he can be pretty solid here on DraftKings. Yeah, they, they, they line up a little bit better on DK, especially with that gigantic gap in price between Geo and Barrios dropping down to these guys. Uh, they're all sort of jammed up a little bit more, where Barrios is only 9000 on FanDuel, only $600 more than Gray. So um, it doesn't make Gray and Porcello look as appealing when you can get those two top guys for a, a, a more discounted price. So I probably won't be looking at uh, too much pitching coming out of this game. It'd be more offense than anything else. And even that, I don't know. I don't necessarily love all of the pricing. I probably prefer the top of the Red Sox order more so than the Yankees. Hmm. But I think that Stanton is the best play of the game. If I had okay. to pick anybody in the, in like just overall, I just, I, I don't really know. I feel like Yankees Red Sox transcends logic sometimes. Yeah, it definitely does. The games are four and a half hours long, and it's you're through eight innings after four hours. It's like, what is going on? Just I don't know if it's the production because they're always on TV. They're always on like national TV or what, uh, but they just take forever all the time. Yeah, I just feel like I don't know. I don't love Ben Intendi's price on on FanDuel as much as I would I would prefer. But you know, getting that lefty righty matchup for him or for Devers is a little bit more appealing to me in a stack than getting Brett Gardner and Gregorius. Um, if we're talking about grabbing like the opposite-sided hitters from, from either team, I like the okay. lefties of Boston more than I like the lefties at the top of the Yankees order. Yeah, so Devers and Benintendi. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. I like them better as hitters um, in general, but... I mean, I just like so you on on DraftKings. It's really hard to play Barrios and Gio Gonzalez. Um, yeah. So I'll probably have one of those two guys, and then Gray. So I don't think I'm gonna end up on any Boston bats. But I agree with with Benintendi, and then like Mookie Betts would be the two guys I'd probably want to play in this matchup. Yeah. But since I'm playing Gray, I probably won't have any. So I just want to make that clear. <coughs> Oops, sorry, I just didn't get the uh, the mute button there on that cough. That's probably <laughs> awful. <laughs> My bad, people. Yeah, I like Betts. I think he's got a pretty nice price on FanDuel tonight, 4300 uh, I'd be fine there. Um, like, Ben Tandy's price is really just not very good on FanDuel tonight, which is fine, but it doesn't make... Like, I just wish that it were... 3200 3300 but I mean, obviously I always wish prices were lower. I'm never like, you know what I wish? I wish that guy would cost $1,000 more. <laughs> so maybe not the best talking point in the world. I'd be I'd be more likely to go like Betts, Ben, Intent, Betts, Ben, Intendi, Devers, than Gardner, Gregorius, pick one of the two monsters. But it's close. Like, it's all a coin flip for me with these guys. Um, I do like Stanton a lot, even though it's righty-righty. But I just, I don't know if it's a price thing or what for me. But he's grading out really well. Okay. Yeah, I love the Yankees. Um, Gardner is one of my favorite plays of the night. And you could definitely steal on Porcello and Gardner, the guy who will steal from time to time. So I like the Yankees stack with all the outfielders, really. Judge Stanton, Gardner. And then you've got Didi Gregorius batting fourth, not the best price, yeah. but um, forty six hundred on DraftKings. That's healthy. Cert- yeah, you can make a case for it um, in terms of a stack. And then you've got Sanchez in the five spot. Um, it's going to be Hicks at six. Is that what you have? Yeah, I have Hicks here. Well, uh, what are his splits look like? Is he better um, against lefties or righties? Let me check. You could probably get to it a little bit faster than me right now. Uh, oh, I don't. I haven't downloaded the stuff from Fangraphs today yet, so maybe I'll get. You. Maybe I'll beat you. Yeah, you, you probably get there quicker. Um, because if he's anyways, better against righties, uh, I think that grades out really well. 
Yeah, he's 3,200. I know he hits right. He's okay. I don't know 2, if he 2,500 on uh, FanDuel. Yeah, so he's he's nice and cheap. Um, only problem is he can't play all the all four outfielders on DraftKings. So you might have to take out one of Gardner, Judge, or Stanton if you're if you're trying to full stack to get in Hicks. Uh, but Gardner for 3,500 on DraftKings is pretty much yeah he's probably one of my favorite plays of the night. Okay. Um, Porcello's a guy that I never use. I don't know if I used him one time last year. I, I haven't used him this year. He's capable of good starts. Like he threw seven innings, seven Ks in his last start, but he just doesn't really make guys miss enough. And then I look at the hard contact numbers: forty percent hard contact, um, through fifty-four woba against lefties last year, and then against righties he wasn't that much better: thirty-three or three thirty-one woba, and then thirty-five percent hard contact. So he, when he gets hit, he gets hit pretty hard, and he, he's like average a little above average in strikeouts on both sides but not a guy that i'm afraid to stack against especially if he's going to be popular which i think he might be yeah i'm with you there uh hicks versus right handers as a lefty 81 uh weighted runs created plus versus wait where are the two either way he's this isn't the matchup for him versus lefties as a righty uh, one oh, great. Uh, the weighted runs created plus one oh four, so significantly better uh, against lefties than righties. So two ninety four woba if we're just boiling it down to one number uh, versus righties in his career. So I can uh, I can comfortably not care as much if he would have been getting that the high side of his splits, I would have been in. Okay, that's fair. Um, yeah, this is just a weird game. Like, nobody's got any sort of awesome pricing. Like, just no doubt about it pricing. Which is weird in a game where we have such a high run total. Like, I would feel like um, one guy would grade out as, like, a, whoa, that's a crazy value. But maybe it's just because it's yeah. Red Sox and Yankees. They could probably just naturally be a little higher and people will pay for it. There is some weather to worry about, too, in this game. Okay. Well, there's wind blowing out right now it looks like and then it's gonna be like 50 degrees and then there could be some rain during the game uh so keep an eye on that especially if you want to play any of these pitchers there could be possibly a delay we have no way of knowing right now um any any uh any weather in washington no just that wind blowing out okay so yeah um I'll have very little of the pitching unless there's something that changes, and I'll have some scattered stacks of both teams, but nothing that I'm super excited about. Awesome. Twins and White Sox. Uh, Twins with a 5.1 run implied total. White Sox 3.9. It's a 62% chance to win for the Twins. Jose Barrios going for Minnesota. Uh, Luke Giolito going for Chicago. I'm not a big Giolito guy in in today's slate and i'll probably have a, a decent amount of barrios on FanDuel just because the pricing is so packed together um i'd have a hard time going all the way up to barrios on dk but i'd end up with a little bit of him if i were you know playing my same sort of style as i would on FanDuel. uh any thoughts on barrios are you, are you gonna pay the full freight i think it's either gonna be him or gonzalez for me so I think Barrios is going to be the chalk on DraftKings, probably on, on both sides, actually. But it, it yeah. seems like a pretty good spot for him. I don't love the swinging straight strike rate and the whiff rate so far, but the White Sox are top five in swinging strike percentage and O-swing percentage. So while it's not a great price, he's going to see a decent amount of righties here, and he's really, really good against righties. He was all last year. Um, lefty power he struggles with sometimes so if you're targeting against Barrios it would be Mancata or Delmonico for me yeah but I, I'm more likely to just plug in Barrios take the strikeouts like he's got a pretty safe strikeout floor I would think here and it's good pitching weather also here in Minneapolis Moncada, <clears throat> excuse me Moncada has a $200 price difference Hmm. on uh, FanDuel and DK. He's actually $200 more expensive on FanDuel. So Moncada looks really nice on DK if that's the direction you want to go. 
Um, I don't really love the White Sox bats all that much. I'll have a, a ton of twins, and I feel like you'll probably be looking the same way. Yeah, so um, Moncada and Delmonico are really cheap, as is Abisel Garcia, all under 3400 yeah. So that might be the, the three guys that I would look at if I was doing a little mini stack against Berrios. But uh, twins bats, Maurer has actually been hitting the ball really hard lately to, or to start the season. That makes and me happy. Yeah, he's, he's been – like he doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but like his average exit velocity is – up there with some of the top guys and you know Giolito is not a guy that I'm scared to stack against the Vegas total is almost up to five for the twins um who else so I don't know if I want to like full stack with the twins but they are really cheap on DraftKings so Dozier is the obvious one 4400 Sano under 4k <clears throat> and then you've got Logan Morrison for 3,000 and Rosario for 2,900. So I think the Twins are going to be popular because the high run total and the low prices yeah. on DraftKings. But yeah, Rosario at 2,500, Logan Morrison 2,200 on FanDuel, Mauer 2,800. <clears throat> I'm just going to end up with a lot of Twin stacks. Yeah. So this, like, if you fade the Twins and they even sort of go off, they're going to bury you because they're going to be chalky people are just going to pay up for Barrios and gonzalez then stack up the twins i think that'll be a pretty popular way to make lineups tonight absolutely so me playing one lineup i don't think that i'll have a full-on twin stack but i definitely want to get in a bat or two i think logan morrison probably my favorite play him or mauer they're both the same price and same position on DraftKings, though yeah i can fit them in I'm, i'm excited about that i can't wait to see I, I'm, I'm guessing that I'm going to see a lot of Twins uh, when I run the crunch. I'm sure. Yeah, and they're a good play. Like, Giolito has a 7.03 and a 7.30 XFIP in his first two starts. So Not he's good. Just, no. He's, Not good. Yeah, I don't know. He, he was supposed to be a guy that made some adjustments. I don't know if he has a new pitch or something. Uh, so I'll look at that. But I think people are going to talk themselves into playing Giolito. At sixty three hundred, okay. and I'm just not not about that at all. No, I I hope that they do. This isn't the best spot for that, so I hope his ownership is way higher than uh, it will be for me, where it will likely be zero. <laughs> yeah, no, no way I'm going to Giolito unless I see something like way out of left field that we're just completely missing. No, so. I'm, I'm all I'm all twins tonight, including you like- the pitching. But what about like minimal Kepler? Barrios. What's up? Yeah. What about like Kepler and uh, Castro near the bottom of the lineup? They're super cheap on DraftKings too. I, I haven't looked on FanDuel, but it looks like they're pretty affordable. Yeah, twenty three hundred for Kepler, uh, twenty two hundred for Castro. I'll probably not have a ton of them, um, just because of how cheap everybody in the top of their order is. Yeah. But they aren't. Having one of the two is probably not the worst differentiator in the world to grab somebody that's a little bit lower owned if you wanted to do a twin stack, since they're probably going to be uh, pretty popular. Yep. Kepler in particular. Mm-hmm. Kepler, that was that was a guy I just wanted to mention. So. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's a good eye. Royals and Angels. This is the final game of the DraftKings main slate. Um Royals with a 4.9 run implied total. Angels 4.1. I don't know if this is real or not. I just made this lineup. There's there's no there's no line at all for this game, so I took my best guess. Um, that has the Royals uh, 57% chance to win. Ian Kennedy going for Kansas City. Nick Trapiano going for the Angels. Uh, I'm not the. Uh, oh, you can't even take Trapiano on Fanduel. He's not in the player pool, so um, I don't have a ton to offer there. Uh, he's 5,500 on DK if you want to go that way. And then uh, for Ian Kennedy, um, not my favorite guy in the world. If this line is relatively big for the Royals, he's not the worst uh, like mid-tier value play from a pitching perspective. Uh, but a lot of that will depend on sort of the implied totals that I end up seeing. Um, it's not a guy that I'm going to have like an overwhelming amount of, but I can get there if I need to just based on the overall total. Uh, do you, you have any interest in either of these guys? I assume you're not touching Trapiano. 
But actually, okay, so I wasn't, but he, okay. yeah. I'm so I'm just looking this. at his game logs, and this is like don't don't research this way, but like <laughs> I'm like I just wanted to because I just wrote him off immediately. Like I just remember this guy being a, a terrible pitcher and wanting to stack against him, but maybe that's not the case because he hasn't pitched since 2016, and um, like if you look at his game logs just from 2016, he's got. He's got games with six strikeout or six innings, eight Ks, five innings, five Ks, six six and two thirds, six Ks, five and a third, ten Ks. So he at at one point it looks like he had pretty decent strikeout stuff. So this is gonna be a guy that I'm gonna dig into a little bit. And I would have looked at him earlier, but last night when I was looking at this, the Angels were undecided with who they were gonna start. And like the Royals don't really scare me. I don't yeah. think he's got, anybody's got huge K upside against the Royals especially um, a righty, but I think he could be decent here for 5,500. This is a guy that, so I'll have the spotlight pitchers out. If this guy's in that, the spotlight pitchers article, which Osimo updates with his notes later, then, um, yeah, he, he's a guy that could could make his way in there just from a price standpoint and a pretty decent matchup. Yeah, Traviano, 8.6 Ks per nine via steamer. That's a projection. 3.6 walks per nine and a 4.5 FIP. You know, that's not the worst line in the world. The 8.6 Ks per nine is actually pretty reasonable. It's higher than Ian Kennedy's, if we want to be real technical. Yeah. Uh, so depending on how that line shakes out, I think that he could come into play a little bit more on DK um, as a second guy. I just... I don't know if I'd rather have him to save money or just have a better pitcher and use the twins um so this guy he he's had one outing in triple a this year three and two thirds seven strikeouts three walks hmm. so i don't know if he just struggles with command so i'm this is gonna be my project after the after the podcast is over so look out for that spotlight pitchers article and see if i can dig up anything on tropiano Okay, I'm excited now. I'm, I'm intrigued. He's not going to be on my wheelhouse because obviously I couldn't roster him even, yeah. even if I wanted to. <laughs> but uh, I'm anxious to see sort of how that plays out, what his ownership ends up being, if you end up on him at all. So I can't wait yeah. to see the, the Slack message of spotlight pitchers are up. I can't wait to yeah. see if he ends up in it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk bats. So... I do like the Royals bats, regardless of where you end up on your uh, your informational journey for Nick sure. Trapiano. Yeah, uh, lots of lefties at the top. Uh, Luke Duda in the five hole, I think, is a pretty nice option for first base. Um, I'm fine with Moose Tacos. Uh, you know, I don't really love John Jay, generally speaking, but 2600 to lead off against the guy making his first appearance appearance since 2016 is. You know, not the worst way to deploy a lefty-ready matchup. So I, I'll have some Royal stacks, so long as this line stays in sort of the general area of where I'm at right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I certainly get the Royals, especially if Tropiano is going to be like a, a trendy, cheap guy on DraftKings. You stack against the cheap, wild guys or the guys you're not sure of that become chalk because it's just a, just a good tournament play to have some exposure to the other side. So... Duda would be the one guy that I really want, and then Mustakis also. So those those two lefties, it looks like Tropiano got hit pretty hard by lefties in 2016. So those would be the two guys that I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah, that that makes that, that totally works for me. Uh, from an Angels perspective, it's just so many righty righty matchups at the top of the lineup that I don't I don't have anything that I'd really love. Although, you know, since it's second base and the slate is small, I think Kinsler's price is probably lower than it needs to be. He's returning from the DL today, or he's, he's eligible to return from the DL today, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he's the guy that, that I like, assuming he's going to be back and leading off. And then, well, let's just talk about Ian Kennedy quick. So he's a, just a hard contact machine yeah. and fly ball machine. There's a lot of wind in this game blowing out to left field and he gives up a ton of pole balls too hmm. so to righties and so i can just picture all these 
like it's a big park or whatever. It's 70 degrees and substantial winds blowing out to left right now. It's a lot of so, Kinsler, a lot of trout, a lot of Upton. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So Kinsler, Trout, Upton, Cozart, and then even Angleton Simmons. And then even if Otani is batting eighth, I still think he's a really good play here. People will just see that he's batting eighth and disregard him or whatever for 4,700. But like if, if I end up playing Tropiano, you, I'll be able to fit in Trout, Otani, Upton, all these expensive outfielders for the Angels, which I, I like the idea of. No, I, I, I can get that. Um, man, Otani's price is so high. I know. He, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's tough to, to do that, especially even with one lineup. It's it's really hard to do it with one lineup bat or play a forty seven hundred dollar guy in the batting eight, hole. eight. Yeah, but I if you're going for the a stack of angels, I can get there. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I, I don't know if I'd play him as a one off. No, no, uh, I but, could I could never get there. <laughs> but I like all the angels outfielders and Kinsler and Cozart especially. Okay. No, that uh, wind blowing out, that matters. Kennedy is uh, the kind of pitcher that you don't sort of want that set up for. So that top half of the Angels lineup, if we can get some, some pull power into that wind, could be nice. I mean, Trout obviously is fine in really any matchup, so I wouldn't mm-hmm. worry there. Uh, but yeah, Kinsler would be the guy that I would, I would, I would look at from the Angels. Uh, just sort of in general for the matchup and like you know being able to lead off at that sort of price is fine he's still a really good hitter for a yeah, second I, baseman yeah angels are my favorite stack of the night i think so i'm gonna try to pay up for as many of them as possible and i don't think they'll be that they'll be popular because it's four game slate but yeah. i don't think they're gonna be overwhelming chalk like i think the twins might be because people like the idea of paying up for two top pitchers in Barrios and Gray or Barrios and Gio Gonzalez. So sure. if I can talk myself into Tropiano, then you'll see a lot of angels in my lineup. There you go. I can't wait to find out if you do. <laughs> so FanDuel's – that's not how you type that. Uh, FanDuel's full slate has – all right, I'm, I'm missing a giant then too. Uh, the Padres-Giants game is a part of the FanDuel late – or main slate – it's a part of DraftKings late slate, so prices are here. I need to figure out who I'm missing from the Giants, which is probably their seven hitter. So if you have a Giants lineup in front of you, Giants lineup, yep. Um, hitting seventh, Hunter Pence. Is that yeah, right? I missed Pence. Okay, we're good. Um, Three point five run implied total for the Padres. Four run implied total for the Giants. It's a 45% chance to win for the Padres. Brian Mitchell going for San Diego. Chris Stratton uh, going for the Giants. Um, you can make a case for either one of these guys uh, because the total is so low. Um, I just don't think there's enough to pay up for on FanDuel if you go with one of these two guys. Uh, I, there's not enough like really heavy expensive stacks that like I see the need to dip down this far, but I do like Stratton just a little bit, um, just because of that 3.5 run implied total for the Padres. Are you looking at either of these guys? Yeah. So these guys aren't on the DraftKings slate. Which oh, yeah. Shit. I kind of wish they were because I I would hope people would play Brian Mitchell again. And I played him once, and that'll be probably the last time I ever play this guy. He's faced 49 batters this year and struck out one of them with nine walks. So he, nothing, nothing looks good for him. The swing strike rate is like under five both starts. So just like don't I, – I wouldn't play Brian Mitchell. So if he goes out there and pitches six innings and six strikeouts, then whatever. But like he's completely off the list for me. Um I'd rather have Giants bats. Sure. And then Stratton, kind of an underwhelming pitcher. He's decent against righties, 22% K rate. Creates a lot of ground balls, 372 XFIP. And it's a huge park. So I, I don't hate it for Stratton. He'd be, I'd much, much rather play Stratton than than Brian Mitchell tonight. Okay. I'm anxious to see how much Stratton comes up in, uh, in the crunch because he grades out really well because of his price. Yeah. 
and because of that Padres implied total. So it'll be fun to, to run that through to see how much I can actually pay up from a hitter perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have any real interest in Padres bats. Um, Padres bats, I guess Hosmer or is it, how do you pronounce the guy who's leading off for San Diego? I'm Frankie? saying it as, as Franchi Cordero. Franchi. Franchi or Frank? I could never, I, I never, people love him on Twitter, like across the industry. So, yeah. Um, I never knew how to pronounce his name, but he's a guy who's just. I'm not the guy you want to go like, to for pronunciation advice. Okay, just yeah. Clear here. <laughs> Neither am I. Uh, but if he's leading off for 2,800, that's pretty appealing. Oh, he, well, he's 2,800 on DraftKings. He's Two, probably. Minimal price on FanDuel. Yeah. So. Like that's the problem on FanDuel. There's not a lot to pay up for tonight, so I don't know if you're going to need Stratton, like you said. So it'll be interesting to yeah. see what Fantasy Cruncher says. Um, but Cordero and Hosmer are the two guys that I really like against Stratton. Yeah, I, I won't have any part of the uh, Giants bat or the Padres bats. Um, okay. I won't. I don't think that I'll need a two thousand dollar one off outfielder out of the lowest implied total game of the night. <laughs> Uh, that's probably yeah. just not a direction I'm going to end up going. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it'll come up probably in one or two lineups, but not anything that I'm going to be really stoked about. Exactly. Uh, Giants bats are the direction that I want to go. You know, I'll have some panic, some belt. Um, you know, I'll get to McCutcheon and Posey and Longoria just because of stacks. You can go all the way, in my opinion, you can go all the way down to Brandon Crawford and be fine. I don't love the implied total. It's not the best game for runs tonight. Um, but the Giants are sort of like a... The, the stepped on version of the twins in that they can stack decently tonight for a very, very low price against a pitcher that's kind of underwhelming. It, the problem is the Padres or the Giants just have a really piss poor implied total. Yeah, that's that's not a great total. There's some wind blowing in mm. and it's already a big park. So you're probably not going to get a lot of home runs here. But again, Mitchell's the guy that just cannot miss any bats. Yeah. So. I have no problem going to McCutcheon, um, Joe Ponick, Posey, and then Longoria. So I, I I don't mind the Crawford play either, but Crawford's just a guy I, I just never play. Like yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> so it's not the best. Look, it's not the best or most appealing game in the world. But when you only have five, your options become a little limited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you can find better shortstop options. Ben Crawford. Agreed. So. so let me pull out these 6 o'clock games. And for those of you that are playing like a one-off uh, just 2 o'clock game, you came to the wrong place for advice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't even know. Is there anything appealing in that early slate? I, I never even looked. Is it a showdown? There might even be a showdown slate for the Pirates-Cubs game since it's kind of by itself. Let's see what we've got. So there are, there's nothing really interesting from a prize pool perspective on FanDuel. And on DK, just the two o'clock game is the showdown. And then it's arcade for the six o'clock game. Yeah. Not much to like. Too many different game types now. Uh, Yeah. So we missed this yesterday, everybody. Um, We were short on time, but today we are not short on time. (laughs) So no. dumping all of the projections in, we're going to crank out some FanDuel and DK lineups and see how how this breaks down based on my projections. FanDuel batting lead off in in this little game that we're playing. I'm just pumped to see it. So I'm going to add one stack of four, and we'll see where we shake out after that. God, there's, it's just such a scattered mess of games today. Yeah. I'm kind like of happy you... about it, but not totally. Okay, so it's going. It said, let's go Stratton. Oh, boy. All right. So Stratton with the Nats is going to be the popular play coming out of my numbers. 48% Stratton, 
25% Geo, 18% Berrios. Scattered crap the rest of the way down. Hmm. Okay. That makes sense to me, I guess. But there's no way I end up with 48% Stratton. <laughs> no, I don't think you need that much to be over the field anyways. No, not, not at all. Over. Lots of Nats. Lots of Rendon. Lots of Trey Turner. Tons of Brian Goodwin. Tons of Harper. I like that Nats side of it. But I'll have to I'll have to uh, nerf Stratton just a little bit. Yeah. Um, what else do we see? He, there's no way that I need 48 percent of him to to do what I need to do. Right. You yeah. got those cheap twins. You got the cheap Giants. Um, yeah, Giants are the other one that's well Rosario up there at 54 percent. Uh, Dozier, Maurer, Sano all at the top, and then Giants, uh, McCutcheon, Panic are the, the next two guys. So it looks like a lot of Nats. You know, top five guys are Nats, and then uh, some scattered in Twins. So that that all makes sense to me. I'm anxious to see how the pieces fit together once lineups come out. Yeah, I wasn't um, I wasn't ready for that much Stratton. No, that's that's quite a bit of Stratton. Yeah, and he's like if. He could get you 30 DK points or whatever, 35 or uh, 30 FanDuel points, not DK. He's not getting you 30 DK points. Yeah. But like if if Barrios or Gray or Porcello or Gonzalez puts up a gem, you're still going to probably need those points because there's not a ton to pay up for. Agreed. So. We'll see uh, how the DK lines shake out. In all four games that are available. Ah. Probably a lot of twins, huh? I'm going to assume there's going to be a healthy amount of twins here. Let's do 100 lines. Tropiano! 69% <laughs> Tropiano. Yeah. Um, all right, then. A lot so. of Geo. And, well, Geo, Sunny Gray, and Barrios are all split one-third, one-third, one-third. So it's basically Tropiano and one of the big three, or you don't have Tropiano and you work in a split of Kennedy and Porcello in that spot. It's yeah. basically what this is saying. Yeah. And then hitter-wise, a lot of Nats, a lot of Twins. Sanchez and Stanton, which is interesting to me. Yeah, I like both of them. So I like a Yankee stack, especially if people are going to play Porcello. If we grab Sanchez and Stanton, there's a Judge lineup there. So there would be some Yankee stacks with a little bit of Nats and Twins sprinkled in. If you want to, yeah, that, that's this second line right here. Barrios, Trapiano, Sanchez, Mauer, Dozier, Rendon, Turner, Stanton, Judge, Rosario. I don't mind that one bit. Three Yankees, three Twins, two Nats. I could roll yeah. with that. Yeah, I like pretty much all those guys in that lineup. So I might have a lineup that looks similar to that. This is, um, I wouldn't play your normal uh, volume today no and I, I mean i'm not going to so i wouldn't suggest you guys do but it's always fun to put in a lineup or two and or 150 of them if if you're like josh so yeah. uh what still... you should really play high volume in uh would be hockey tonight after reading oh, yeah. all of your uh, hockey articles for there tonight. you go yeah perfect cheap uh, plug alert transition transition yeah uh so i'll have the spotlight stacks or um i'll have the spotlight players of the night and the which is the individual players a uh, couple top tier guys couple value guys and then i'll have the stacks of the night it's probably two or three stacks probably three tonight since there's five games um and yeah we'll have some some good hockey content it'll be a fun night of watching some stanley cup playoffs and hopefully making some money i'm excited it like I might actually play some hockey tonight. Yes. Yeah. To fill in the gambling addiction. Yeah, exactly. Skill gaming addiction. Well, I feel like I. Yeah, skill gaming. Yeah, skill I should, I should buy yeah. my tongue there for that one. Um, 
I feel like I should just take advantage of the fact that it's my first day without like any real basketball on the slate in a while, but I, I probably won't. I'll probably oh, just yeah grind Degen- hard into some baseball. Yeah, and all you degenerates, come play hockey. There's there's definitely an edge in the playoffs. There's an edge all season, but um, should be fun. People, some some uh, novice viewers will watch and throw lineups in. So come read our content and then make some money. You heard it here from our resident hockey expert. I don't have anything else to talk about for baseball. We'll be around with spotlight pitchers, hitters, stacks throughout the day. Um, Awesome will be tagging into those uh, to add any additional thoughts that he has. So check that out. Uh, For anybody that's confused by that, by the way, so uh, Jake and I are writing those articles now, and uh, Awesome is coming in behind us with his own notes of, you know, thoughts on whatever we had to say, plus anything else additional that, you know, he was taking a look at. Um, I feel like people were misreading the header, thinking there were going to be solo articles coming out from him. They're actually just refresh. It's just extra information at the bottom of the article. So if it's something you've already looked at, you want to go back to it and see if it's been added to the bottom. I had one guy uh, ask about it last night on Twitter. I I let him know this morning, like, uh, he's actually written on all of them, (laughs) and all of the information is there, so if you're expecting a fresh, different article coming out, you're going to be waiting a while. It's already in the current article. Yeah, so just check around, like, I'll probably have the spotlight pictures out um, at noon Eastern, before noon Eastern, and then, yeah, I don't know, when does Osmo usually update like later on throughout the day now that we have the ability to turn these out earlier than we were before uh, i would expect that you know in like the three o'clock four o'clock area depending on how the day is today's a a lighter day in general so you know time is a little bit easier for everyone without any nba today yep that's all i got me too all right you guys uh thank you for uh being a part of this today uh if, like and subscribe if you're happy with where we're going channel's growing uh, very nicely every single day we're going to continue turning out this baseball stuff with regularity and now it, it will be uh, the primary video content uh with basketball uh, slowly moving into the playoffs so if you have any questions for us you know hit us up on twitter our uh, twitter handles are in the comment section after the video if you have any other questions, you know, you please come to awesomeo.com. We'll have all of the rankings for every sport you'll be looking to play. Uh, articles from both of us, uh, blurbs from Awesomeo himself on his plays. Just a ton of stuff going on. We're we're churning out content constantly, so come check it out. Best of luck, everybody. Good luck, guys.